David, you've toured the country talking about reforms to fix our fiscal mess. What does the public think about these reforms? Based on my experience going to all 50 states and conducting town hall meetings, uh, speeches with business community leaders, college campuses all over the country, the public are way ahead of the politicians. They know you can't spend a lot more money than you take in, charge it to the credit card, self-deal in your own debt, and not have a day of reckoning. They're prepared for tough choices with regard to revenues and with regard to spending, as long as they're part of a comprehensive plan that they deem to be fair. So David, why is Washington so dysfunctional and so gridlocked? The truth is, we have a republic that is not representative of or responsive to the public. We have a duopoly, two political parties that control the system. We're dominated by career politicians. We have a situation where a vast majority of the congressional districts have been gerrymandered, where politicians pick their voters rather than voters picking their politicians. And we don't have term limits. So as a result, you have many people that get in to their job and they want to stay there as long as they're alive. Maybe that's the reality, but what are the stakes if we don't put our finances in order? If you don't put your finances in order, everybody will suffer to differing degrees over time. Putting our finances in order are critical. If we want our position in the world to stay strong, if we want our economy to stay strong, if we want to generate more opportunities for Americans today and in the future, if we want to be able to ensure our national security and our domestic tranquility. The states are very, very big. Are there political reforms that would make politicians more responsive to the voters? We need more competition. That means we need to change the redistricting process such that we have a more independent body deciding how the districts are drawn. We need to maximize competition consistent with the Voting Rights Act, not to minimize competition and entrench incumbents, which is the case today. We need to be able to eliminate Democratic and Republican primaries. We need to have one unified, consolidated primary where everybody can vote and the top two vote-getters run off in the general election. We need to change our campaign finance laws, especially in light of the recent Supreme Court decisions, so that we can uh, have more competitive and fairer races. In addition, we need to consider term limits, 12 to 18 year term limits for federal office, so that people can serve enough time to be effective, but they can't make uh, politics a career. That's not what our founders intended. That's not good for a healthy democracy. How can we accelerate action on needed fiscal reforms before crisis forces us to act? It's important to understand that we're going to make these tough choices. The question is, do we make them prudently and preemptively before we have a crisis, or do we wait till a crisis forces us to act in a dramatic and potentially draconian fashion like many European nations did? I prefer the first, but for that to happen, we need extraordinary leadership from the president and congressional leaders of both parties to go to the American people, to tell them the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, to bring them together based upon a set of principles and values, to talk about specific nonpartisan reforms that ought to be able to get bipartisan support, and then act. The American people are ahead of the politicians. They can handle the truth. They're starved for leadership. I think we agree with you, David. But what can each of us do to make a difference? Everybody has a stake in our future. Everybody will suffer to differing degrees if we fail to put our finances in order before we have a crisis. It's important that you become informed and involved. It's important that you reach your circle of friends, family, and other connections to encourage them to become informed and involved. It's important that you press your elected officials and those who want to represent you to, on these issues to be able to let them know that whether or not they're going to treat this seriously, whether or not they're going to act sooner rather than later, whether or not they'll act consistent with a set of principles and values that make sense to you will determine whether or not you will support them today and into the future. We need to make the political price of continuing to do nothing greater than the political price associated with making some tough choices today in order to create a better future. David, thank you for sharing this important information with us. 
In closing, can you summarize for us what we need Washington to do? We need more investment in the short term, coupled with a clear, credible, and concrete and enforceable plan to put our finances in order over time. If we do that, our future will be better than our past. Thank you.